Hello, and welcome back to the Lemonade War. Uh, last time when we left off, Jessie was very confused about why Evan was upset at her. She thought it might have something to do with a letter saying that she and Evan would be in the same class. And while she thought that was a great thing, Evan was not as thrilled. Evan, of course, being older than her, and Jessie um, having moved up a grade, they would end up being in the same class for, num for a few different reasons. Evan, not thrilled about that, um, decides to find his friend, Scott, and start a lemonade stand without Jesse. Jesse, none too happy about this. And that is where we pick up in Chapter 3, Joint Venture. We'll be hearing from Evan this time. A joint venture is when two or more people join forces to sell a certain amount of goods or to work on a single project. When the goods are sold or the project is finished, the joint venture ends. Your sister is really... Shut up, said Evan. Huh? said Scott. Just shut up, okay? She's, o she's okay. She just... She doesn't... Look, she's okay, so just shut up. Okay, said Scott, holding up his free hand to show he meant peace. Evan was getting abused on both sides. The heavy cooler was banging against his inside leg with every step, and the plastic chairs were scraping against his outside leg. Bruised and bloodied, he thought to himself, all for the fun of hanging out with Scott Spencer. Why couldn't Jack have been home, or Ryan, and why did Adam have to be on the cape this week? It stunk. How far are we walking? grunted Scott. Just to the corner. Evan watched as drops of sweat fell off his face and landed on the hot sidewalk. We should have stayed in the driveway, said Scott. It was shaded. The corner's better, trust me, said Evan. He remembered when Jesse had said the same words to him last summer. They were setting up a lemonade stand together, and Evan had been grumbling about dragging the cooler across the street and down two houses, just like Scott. But Jesse had insisted. There's sidewalk on this side, she'd said, so we'll get the foot traffic coming in both directions, and people in cars coming around the curve will have time to see us and slow down. Besides, there are a bunch of little kids on the side street, and their mothers won't want them crossing Damon Road. The corner's better, trust me. And she was right. They'd made a ton of money that afternoon. It took ten seconds to set up the lemonade stand. Evan unfolded the chairs and set one on each side of the cooler. Scott tilted the sign toward the street for maximum effect. Then they both sat down. Man, is it hot, said Evan. He took off his baseball cap and wiped the sweat from his face with his shirt. Then he grabbed an ice cube from the cooler, balanced it on his head, and stuck his cap back on. Yeah, said Scott. I'm thirsty. He reached into the paper bag and pulled out a cup. It was one of those large red plastic cups the vendors used at professional baseball games. Then, Scott took one of the pitchers from the cooler and filled the cup to the brim with lemonade. Hey, not so much, said Evan, pouring himself a cup too, but only partway. He glugged down half his drink. Not bad, he thought, though he noticed a dead fruit fly floating on the top. His mom had been battling a mad fruit fly infestation ever since the weather had turned really warm. The kitchen sink, w the kitchen sink area, where they kept the fruit bowl, was dotted with tiny feathery fruit fly corpses. Scott drained his cup and tossed it on the ground. Ah, he said, satisfied. That was good. I'm going to have another. Evan reached for the trashed cup and stowed it under his seat. Nah, come on, Scott. You're going to drink all our profits if you do that. He stretched his legs out by putting his feet up on top of the cooler. Just chill. I'm going to chill by having another cup, said Scott. There it was, that mean bite in Scott's voice. Evan's shoulders tensed up. Move your feet, said Scott. It's hot out here. Dude, you're... Evan sat up expectantly and looked down the street. Hey, here comes our first customer. A mother pushing a double stroller came into view. At the same time, one of the kindergartners from down the street rode her bike up, noticed the sign, and quickly pedaled back to her house. Within five minutes, there was a small crowd of neighborhood kids and pedestrians buying lemonade from the stand. Evan let Scott handle all the money while he took care of the pouring and the sweet talk. That's what his mother called it when a salesperson chatted her up. 
Trust me, she had once told Evan and Jesse. Buying something is only half about getting something. The other half is all about human contact. Mrs. Tresky knew about these things because she was a public relations consultant. She'd even written a booklet called Ten Bright Ideas to, L to Light Up Your Sales for one of her clients. And Evan was like her. He was good at talking with people, even grown-ups. It was easy for him, so he kept the conversation flowing along with the lemonade. People hung around. Most of them brought, bought a second cup before they left. Evan was so busy, he almost didn't notice Jesse flying out of the garage on her bike and riding down the street toward town. Good riddance, he thought, but at the same time he wondered where she was going. During a lull in business, Evan walked all around the stand, picking up discarded plastic cups. Scott sat in his chair, jingling the coins in his pocket. Man, we are going to be so rich, said Scott. I bet we made five bucks already. I bet we made ten. How much do you think we made? Evan shrugged. He looked at the stack of used cups in his hand and counted the rims. Fourteen. They'd sold fourteen cups so far, and each cup of lemonade cost fifty cents. Evan heard Mrs. DeFazio's voice in his ear. Mrs. DeFazio had been his third grade teacher, and she'd done everything she could to help Evan with his math. If one cup of lemonade sells for fifty cents, and you sell fourteen cups of lemonade, how much money have you made? Word problems. Evan hated word problems. And this one was impossible anyway. He was pretty sure the right equation was 14 times 50. But how was he supposed to solve that? That was double-digit multiplication. There was no way he could do a problem like that. And besides, some of those 14 people had bought refills but used the same cup. How many? Evan didn't know. Still, he knew they'd made a pretty good amount of money. That estimate was close enough for him. How much do you think we could make if we sold it all? asked Scott. I don't know, said Evan. Maybe 20 bucks? That sounded high even to him, but Evan was an optimist. Do you really think? said Scott. Both boys looked in the cooler. Three pitchers were empty. They only had half a pitcher left. You were pouring the cups too full, said Scott. You should have poured less in each one. You're the one who brought the huge plastic cups. You could fit a gallon in one of those, said Evan. Besides, I wasn't going to be chintzy. They're paying a whole half a buck for it. They deserve a full cup. And anyway, we can just go home and make more. My mom has cans of lemonade in the freezer. So go home and make more, said Scott. Oh, yes, your majesty. Oh, high commander. Your infiniteness, said Evan. Why don't you go make it? Because I'm chillin', said Scott, leaning back in his chair with a stupid grin on his face. Evan knew he was just joking, but this was exactly why he didn't like Scott. He was always thinking of himself, always looking for some way to come out on top. If they were playing knockout, Scott always came up with a new rule that helped him win. If they were doing an assignment together, Scott always figured out how to divide it so he had less work to do. The kid was a weasel, no two ways about it. But everyone else was out of town. Evan didn't want to spend the day alone, and Jesse... Jesse was on his poop list, as Mom called it, when the dog did something he wasn't supposed to do. Evan might never play with Jesse again. Evan crossed the street and went into the house. He was surprised to find that there were no more cans of lemonade in the freezer. Wow, there'd been so many this morning. Luckily, there was a can of grape juice in the freezer and a bottle of ginger ale in the fridge. It'll work, he thought. People just want a cold drink. They don't care if it's lemonade. He mixed up the grape juice at the sink. The fruit flies were more out of control than ever, thanks to the lemonade the boys had dribbled on the countertop. Evan swatted a couple, but most of them drifted out of his reach and settled on the fruit bowl. He wished his mother believed in chemical warfare, but for Mrs. Tresky, it was all natural or nothing. Usually nothing. When he came back outside to the lemonade stand, Evan noticed that the last pitcher was turned upside down on the cooler. Ah, oh, come on, Scott he said. What? said Scott. It was hot, and you said we could always make more. Yeah, well, Evan said, we didn't have as much in the house as I thought. I've got grape juice and ginger ale. I hate ginger ale, Scott said. I wouldn't give you a penny for it. It turned out that a lot of people felt the same way. Business was definitely slower. The day got hotter, the sun beat down on them so ferociously 
that it was easy to imagine the sidewalk cracking open and swallowing them whole. Fanning himself, Evan asked, How much money do you really think we could make? I don't know, said Scott, pushing his baseball cap down over his eyes. I mean, on a hot day like this, Evan said, silently adding the words, or tomorrow. If we sold eight pitchers of lemonade, what do you think we'd each make? Eight pitchers? I don't know. Scott shook his head. His baseball-capped face wagged back and forth. Too hot for math, and it's summer. Evan pulled the red pen out of his pocket and started to write on the palm of his hand. Eight times... Eight times fifty? Divided by two? That didn't seem right. Jessie would know. She'd do that math in a second. Evan capped the pen and jammed it into his pocket. But I bet it's a lot, said Evan. I bet on a hot day like this, we could actually make some real money in the lemonade business. Yeah, said Scott. Then we'd be rich. And I'd get an Xbox, the new one, with the dual controls. I'd get an iPod, said Evan. He'd been saving for one for over a year. But every time he had some money put away, well, it just disappeared. Like the $10 from Grandma. She'd even written in her card, Here's a little something to help you get that music thing you want. But the money was gone. He'd treated Paul and Ryan to slices of pizza at Townhouse. It had been fun. That would be so great to listen to music whenever I want, said Evan. I could tune you out, he added in his own head. They sat in silence, feeling the heat suck away every bit of their energy. Evan was hatching a plan. The heat wave was supposed to last at least five days. If he and a friend, not Scott, set up a lemonade stand every day for five days, he'd definitely have enough to buy an iPod. He imagined himself wearing it as he walked to school, wearing it on the playground. Hey, Megan, yeah, it's my iPod. Sweet, huh? Wearing it in class when the teacher droned on about fractions and percents. Nah, but it would be so cool. At least there would be one thing, one thing, that didn't totally stink about going back to school. After two hours, they decided to call it quits. Sales had dropped off fast and then stopped altogether. Hey, did you notice something? Asked Evan, stacking the chairs. What? said Scott. When we started the stand, most of our business came from that direction. He pointed down the street toward the curve in the road. But after an hour, not one person who walked past, the, past us from that direction bought a cup. Not one. They all said, no thanks, and kept on walking. Why do you think? Don't know, said Scott. <laughs> Boy, you're a real go-getter, said Evan. You know that? Scott socked him in the chest, but Evan defended and knocked Scott's cap off. While Scott, while Scott was scrambling for his hat, Evan said, just hang here for a minute, okay? And set off down the street. As soon as he rounded the curve, he knew why business had fallen off so badly. There was Jesse, and Megan Moriarty from his class. They were standing inside a wooden booth, and their sign said it all. Lemonade, frosty, delicious, thirst quenching. Wow, only 50 cents per cup. By the looks of it, their business was booming. Evan watched as Jesse accepted a fistful of dollar bills from a mother surrounded by kids. At that moment, Jesse looked up and saw him. Evan had a weird feeling, like he'd been caught cheating on a test. He wanted to run and hide somewhere. Instead, he froze. What would Jesse do? Evan couldn't believe it. She sneered at him. She cocked her head to the side and gave him this little, I'm so much better than you, smile. And then, and then... She waved the money in her hand to him. She waved it, as if to say, Look how much we've made selling lemonade. Bet you can't beat that. Evan turned on his heel and walked away. Behind him, he could hear Megan Moriarty laughing at him, clear as a bell. And we'll pick up next time with Chapter 4, Partnership. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.